This is our biggest DFB challenge yet. Can we eat for $20 or under a day in Disney World and help you do the same? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Planning your budget for three meals a day on Disney World property adds up fast. And it's not just the signature meals we're talking about here. It's the drinks, the snacks, the quick services, the fast food, everything. So we're taking on a massive challenge today. Can we actually eat for under 20 bucks a day in Disney World? For this challenge, we're heading to all four parks and Disney Springs. And as a bonus, we're attempting it over at the monorail resorts too. Disclaimer, before we jump into things, everyone's eating habits are different. So while one person may think our approaches are completely doable, someone else may want to approach things differently to make sure they're getting more of a Disney foodie experience. Totally cool. This challenge isn't a you must follow these eating patterns exactly to be successful. More so, it's a way to show you methods for saving so that you can apply that to your own dining budget however you see fit. So pick and choose what works for you and add it to your budget because 20 bucks a day, that's hard. Now, with that being said, let's take a look at some of the savings methods that you can look into before you start heading into the parks. And we're going to talk about some of the least expensive food items that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Okay, some tips before you head to the parks to start attempting this challenge. This is how you can start saving money on food before you even get into the parks. One, pack food and snacks ahead of time. I know it's more fun to spend money on food inside Disney World, but if your main goal is to see all the parks and spend less than 20 bucks a day on food, and you've got a group tagging along that couldn't care less about whether you're eating Mickey-shaped Rice Krispie treats or Kellogg's pre-packaged ones, then packing plenty of portable non-melty snacks is gonna be key. You can also use grocery delivery services. Now, at the start of your trip, download a grocery delivery app like Instacart to have basic groceries sent straight to your hotel room. Not only will you be able to get any and all snacks for your park bag, but if your hotel room has a kitchen with a refrigerator, you'll be able to stock up on supplies and cook meals right in your room. The one downside about these services though, and I know you're thinking this right now, are those sneaky delivery fees, which can make your grocery bill creep up higher than you were expecting. So make sure you know how to save save those big bucks on grocery delivery orders. Many grocery delivery services are gonna give you your first delivery free. So if you order all your groceries that you'll need for your trip in one go, you shouldn't have to worry about the extra charge this time as a new customer. But read up on the grocery service you're using to make sure that's a perk that'll actually be applicable, obviously. Also, check the websites of these grocery apps and see if they're running any sort of promotions, because oftentimes they do. Grocery apps like Instacart also help you find extra ways to save through online couponing. So just go to the savings tab on the website, see what digital coupons are available. They can help cut down the prices of certain produce and snacks and essentials. Next, and again, these are all tips you can think about before you even go to Disney World, and then we're gonna jump into the actual Disney food. You can invest in refillable souvenirs. If you plan on getting a Disney popcorn bucket, make sure you pick one at the very beginning of your trip. Yep, the popcorn bucket itself is gonna cost you around 20 bucks, depending on what design you choose, but you'll also get $2.25 popcorn refills for the rest of your trip at any participating popcorn and snack carts, and it's usually a lot of them. So same goes for the refillable mugs too. If you're gonna get one, get one on arrival. When you purchase a refillable mug, you'll be able to get free refills of sodas, teas, and coffee for the duration of your trip as long as you're filling them up at the resort quick services and by the way that's any resort any hotel which if you haven't been to Disney for a while that's going to be a new kind of expansion for you and you won't be able to fill them up in the parks but any hotel you're good and of course grab that celebration button what you're going to notice on these lists is that there's not a whole lot of room for extra sweets and goodies since those snacks still add up big time and they don't actually fill you up in a sustainable way so if you want a potentially free snack at one or multiple disney world restaurants then don't forget to grab that celebration button if you're at the parks celebrating your graduation your birthday your anniversary or other cheers worthy occasion you never know when your disney server might decide to celebrate along with you with a free dessert you can pick up a celebration button at the front desk of any Disney World Resort or at the guest relations buildings located at the front of any of the four parks. Okay, now on to the challenge. First up, let's head to the OG park, see what we can accomplish with 20 bucks in our pocket at Magic Kingdom. Now, keeping costs low in Magic Kingdom is a little tricky, even with all the quick service options and fast food available. But the one way you can save money right from the start of your day is to skip the Starbucks run. Some of you might already be tapping out. It's okay, I understand that Starbucks is liquid gold. Plus, it has those huge cinnamon rolls. Those are hard to pass up. 
But instead of going to the Main Street Bakery, plan on eating breakfast back at the hotel because that's not just going to save you money, it's going to save you so much time. And time is essential, time is money, in those early morning hours at the park when you're wanting to hit up as many rides as possible. Good breakfast, the items to have on hand are energy bites, protein bars, bagels with spreads or peanut butter, something substantial that doesn't make you hungry 30 minutes into your park day. Also, if you're staying at a Disney World hotel, or even if you're staying off property for most hotels, you should have a Keurig right in your room with all the coffee fixin', so you don't have to purchase caffeine when you get to the park. Now after you hit up a couple of rides, try to swing by Sleepy Hollow Refreshments in Liberty Square for your first meal purchase of the day. Once you get to this little quick service window, you'll be able to order a massive fruit waffle sandwich for around $8. This is packed with strawberries, bananas, blueberries, and chocolate hazelnut spread. Now this item is shareable, but you may want to take on the whole thing yourself if you want it to sustain you through peak lunch hours, which tend to range 11.30 to 1. Don't forget you'll need to wash this waffle down and stay hydrated. Most quick service locations will be able to provide you with free water. Even if you don't want to order anything else at the time, they can get you free water cups. So don't feel like you need to buy a $5 bottle of Dasani every time you're thirsty. The only downside about this water is that depending on where you're getting it, the flavor can taste a little swampy. But you can fix this by grabbing water flavoring drops from your local big box store before your trip or when you're on your Instacart shopping spree. Some flavor drop brands like the Liquid IV and Mio will even add extra electrolytes to your water to give you more energy and more hydration. So not a bad option to have on hand. Don't want to keep asking quick services for more water? Bring a refillable water bottle to the parks. You'll have multiple opportunities to fill up at water refill stations in several different locations. Just track down the water fountains because where there's a water fountain, there will likely be a free refill station nearby. Now, let's get back to the food. You'll wanna keep pre-packed snacks in your park bag that contain lots of protein. That way, when the munchies strike, you'll have something more satisfying to keep you full longer, like trail mixes with a variety of nuts and no chocolate unless you want a melty mess on your hands. Beef jerky is also a great one to have on hand too. But sometimes you just want something salty and satisfying, which is why I also like to pack away travel size baggies with pretzels and popcorn. When you're ready to start spending the rest of your 20 bucks, check out the Adventureland Spring Roll Cart. There you can get two savory spring rolls for a little over $9. Flavors here vary, but recently we've seen options here that include cheeseburger, buffalo chicken, pastrami and pepper jack cheese, AKA the 50th anniversary specialty flavor. And once in a while they have that pizza spring roll. You can also get a spring roll combo and get two different flavors if you can't decide which option to settle on. Again, if you're not vibing with the whole spring roll option is something to rely on for sustenance, there are several alternatives you can look into instead that still range around nine bucks. Even the table service on Main Street USA, the Plaza restaurant, has a hearty chili on their menu for $9 that you may prefer ordering instead. Not to mention, you'd be able to sit down and eat in the AC for a little bit. Whatever you choose, make sure it's something you'll be able to finish because you don't want to spend some of your $20 budget on a meal that you're not going to finish. No matter the price, honestly, it'd be much better for you to go a little over your 20 bucks and get something you know will feed you rather than settling on something that fits your limit and throwing most of it away. All right, day one in the books. Now let's hop over to a park where food is abundant and 20 bucks can stretch a long way. Yep, we're headed to Epcot. Now the good thing about Epcot that you're gonna wanna rely on when trying to keep your spending 20 bucks and under are all the different food offerings available whenever a festival is going on, which is almost always. The outdoor food booths wrapped around the World Showcase are meant for taste testing, so they'll often have items priced lower than you'd find at a normal quick service location because portions will be smaller. However, that doesn't mean you can't still find hearty offerings at a really good price. Let's look for a few examples from this year's Food and Wine Festival. The Impossible Meatballs at Earth Eats, those come with herbed polenta, rustic puttanesca sauce, and basil pesto. They're $5.75 great deal. The feijoada at Brazil, which features crispy pork belly, Brazil nut pesto, and Ben's original long grain white rice, as well as black beans, is not only flavorful and filling, but also priced at only $6.25. And the Spam Masubi Nigiri from Hawaii with sushi rice, teriyaki glazed Spam, spicy mayonnaise, eel sauce, and nori is satisfying, savory, and priced at 6 bucks. 
But that's only scratching the surface. There are so many different offerings you can choose from. And because many of those offerings range around five to six dollars, you're gonna be able to try two to three with your $20 budget. Food and Wine Festival is getting ready to wrap up soon, but Festival of the Holidays is right around the corner and they have some really, really satisfying, filling, large items that are some of my favorites at festivals for the entire year. If you wanna study up on all the different food booths for whatever festival you decide to visit though, you can get a head start by checking out our full DFB digital guides. Those not only tell you about the different food offerings at each of the booths, but also price points and reviews to help you figure out your Epcot food budget. You can get those guides at dfbstore.com. Use code YouTube for a discount. Now, aside from the festival booths, you can also turn to some of the quick service menus inside the pavilions for a cheaper and filling meal. One of our main go-tos, of course, is Léal Boulangerie Patisserie in the France Pavilion. They're known for their lower priced pastries and sandwich options within that bakery display case. But if you're looking for the ultimate comfort food, you can rely on the Bisque de Omard, which is a lobster bisque in a bread bowl for around six bucks. Don't forget about the backpack snacks though. Other filling pre-packed snacks that can help you get through your Epcot day include options like granola and peanut butter crackers or any other options that I listed earlier. My advice, overpack on the snacks because even if you don't think you're going to need say six packages of peanut butter crackers, it's better to have them with you just in case you do. That way you won't be tempted into spending money you don't want to spend. All right, two days down. Now it's time for one of the most difficult parks to fit into a $20 budget. Can we do it? Disney's Hollywood Studios. Hollywood Studios is definitely an eat breakfast in your hotel room before you arrive kind of park, because although this isn't my favorite place to find a meal, it's also a trickier place to find multiple sustaining options that'll feed you for 20 bucks. So we did what we had to do to make sure our tummies were happy. We cheated a little bit. I said this was a challenge, so I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let me tell you about what we really did order in the park. One of the most affordable places to find a quick meal in Hollywood Studios is Woody's Lunchbox in Toy Story Land. Now, I'm about to introduce you to a money-saving concept I've talked about in the past, but I haven't gotten a chance to put into practice with today's video yet until now. At fast food locations in Disney World, anyone is allowed to order off the kids' menu, not just children, but teens and adults too. And although kids' meals can be a bit smaller, they also tend to make up for the entree portion through the side offerings, which often include a type of fry or tater tot, fresh fruit, and a drink. At Woody's Lunchbox, you can order the kids grilled cheese, which is like the adult version, but half the size, which comes with a cuties mandarin orange, potato barrels, and your choice of beverage for about seven bucks. Not too bad when you consider the full adult version is about $10 and doesn't include all the extra offerings. And don't forget, you can choose what your sides are. So if you'd rather have two sides of potato barrels, which are tater tots, you can do that too. Now let's introduce another money saving concept, sharing. Splitting bigger portions for different menu items with someone else in your group who's willing to split the bill with you can help cut an entree price by half because sharing is caring. Now, if you want an order of say tachos from Woody's Lunchbox, which comes with potato barrels coated with beef and bean chili and shredded cheese, signature queso, tomatoes, corn chips, topped off with sour cream and a sprinkle of green onion, these will normally cost you $10. But if you're sharing and it's a big portion, you can knock that price down to five for yourself. So now we're getting into the cheating part because we're still wanting to keep our cost low. We're actually gonna order food from outside the park. Can anyone say DoorDash to the rescue? Food delivery services like DoorDash and Uber Eats can bring you fast food from outside the Disney bubble to your Disney World hotel, or honestly, any hotel you decide to stay in. But much like grocery delivery services, you could fall into those tricky hidden delivery fees that can bump up the price of what should be a pretty cheap meal. So here's how you can cut down on those tacked on costs and still order food for less than you'd find at Hollywood Studios for dinner back at your hotel. First tip, take advantage of pop-up deals. Apps like Uber Eats will often feature some sort of pop-up deal you can apply to your order. This doesn't always happen, but when it does, take advantage. In the past, we've gotten deals that have helped us save 40% off of purchases up to $15. You can also check for Disney Plus perks. Okay, you're like, what? Why are you talking about Disney Plus when you're talking about Uber Eats? Well, back in the summer of 2022, Disney Plus subscribers could get a discount on Uber Eats for a limited time. Again, this might not always be the case, but it never hurts to check. And signing up for our DFB newsletter, we'll make sure that you know immediately when we find deals like this so you don't miss out. And I'll put our newsletter link in the description down below. 
You can also buy an Uber Eats gift card. If you're a Target red card holder, you can get a 5% discount on your purchases and that includes gift cards too, so you can pay money, so you can basically buy that gift card and save 5% right away. And you can eat at off times. During those peak lunch and dinner hours, Uber Eats will not only have longer delivery times, but sometimes delivery fees will be on surge pricing. So you can save time and money by eating lunch and dinner like around 2 to 4 p.m. or you can order after peak dinner times around 8 p.m. or later. Don't want to use a food delivery app? If you brought your own car to Disney, you can swing by the McDonald's location inside the Disney bubble for some way cheaper cheeseburger and chicken nugget options than you'll find in Hollywood Studios. Or you may want to get the group together to pitch in for a whole pizza pie from your resort's quick service, if available. Entire pizzas at the Disney Hotel food courts will often cost around $18 to $20, but if multiple people are helping cover that cost, you should still be able to get a couple of slices for less than a quick service entree inside the parks, while also managing to feed multiple people at once. If you'd rather not leave Hollywood Studios to track down cheaper food, then you may want to pack sandwiches for a park picnic. But let me just give you some sandwich packing advice. First off, make sure the ingredients you're packing are going to stay good while in your park bag. Travel-sized containers of peanut butter, chicken salad, or well-sealed packages of lunch meat should stay okay until you're ready to chow down. But options like avocados, sliced bananas, sometimes even lettuce, that's going to wilt and start to brown and be messy to handle. You know, you've packed lunches before. Just think about packing lunch and having it be 90 degrees all the time. And secondly, try making your sandwiches once you're inside the parks. So instead of putting them together before, you can avoid soggy bread syndrome by just making them when you get there. Also, buying a multi-count box of Uncrustables at your local grocery store can be a great way to keep you fed and your kids fed. Multiple Disney restaurant locations also sell Uncrustables, but at a much higher price. So it's better to save your money by buying a bulk pack ahead of time. Okay, that one was tricky, obviously, but now we're at the final park, and this park has several options that'll stretch 20 bucks, not just through lunch and dinner, but breakfast too. All right, Animal Kingdom, let's see what damage we can do here with just 20 bucks. All right, we're skipping the protein bars and Pop-Tarts back in the hotel room, because Animal Kingdom has a few breakfasty options on a budget that you might not be aware of. So let's start our day of cheaper eats over at Pongu Pongu in Pandora, World of Avatar, to pick up a Pongu Lumpia. Pongu Lumpias have folks pretty split. Some enjoy this pineapple cream cheese spring roll and some really don't. But if you're the type to enjoy fruity and creamy pastry like breakfast items, you can pick up one of these for a little less than four bucks. Kusafiri Coffee Shop and Bakery over in the Africa section of the park, right there in Harambe, that's also a solid place for some more affordable pastry-like selections, with assorted muffins and croissants and fresh fruit cups ranging between four and five bucks. This location's just kind of out of the way if you're trying to catch an early morning ride on Flight of Passage. Around lunch, we've of course got to stop for a mac and cheese break. Otherwise, would this really be a DFB video? Eight Spoon Cafe is an unassuming building in Discovery Island with some really good and really affordable baked mac and cheese options. But the most affordable option of the baked mac and cheese bunch is the standard option, minus the pulled pork topping, and that's going to cost you under five bucks. Now, I know not everyone shares my affinity for all things cheesy and noodly, so if you want another more affordable yet sizable option to choose from, head over to Yak and Yeti Local Foods Cafe in the Asia section and order a chicken fried rice for about $6. Chicken fried rice may not sound sizable at first, but once you take a look at the container it's in, you'll find out very quickly how filling this $6 rice option can really be. Not to mention it's good, it's nice, it's hot, it's savory, and it's got protein. And now it's time to head back to Pandora, but this time we're eating dinner at Satuli Canteen. You've got a couple of different options here. Option one, you can split one of the combination customizable bowls, which feature your choice of protein, base, and sauce with someone else in your group, since the options you choose from are going to give you nice big portions for around $13 to $18. Or option two, you can order the same type of combo bowl with options like chicken, beef, or fried tofu off the kids' menu for a smaller portion and a smaller price point around $9 to $10 instead. Your call. And if you decide to get a fountain drink here, which may push you over that $20 budget, keep in mind that the sodas and teas are refillable. So take advantage of that and fill up. That way you can take a drink with you after you finish your meal. 
All right, we actually managed three meals for under $20, not too shabby, but again, always bring extra snacky options with you to keep you fed and full throughout the day. So what should we pack in our bag this time? It's nice to have different options to choose from each day. That way you don't burn out eating the same peanut butter crackers over and over and over again. Try to add some flavor variety with options like fruit snacks, bags of chips, fruits that won't easily go bad like unpeeled apples and oranges, veggies that can be kept fresh in plastic containers like carrots, sugar snap peas, and cucumber slices, and squeezable applesauce packets. Okay, now that we're finished spending our 20 bucks at the parks, let's head over to Disney's shopping district, which was by far the easiest challenge of them all. Spoiler alert, I was able to stretch 20 bucks once again across breakfast, lunch, and dinner while I was at Disney Springs. But before I get to that, let's talk about two other ways you can save the big bucks while eating around this shopping district. Tip one, check for happy hours. Disney Springs restaurants love their happy hours. On select days and certain time frames, many Disney Springs restaurants will feature happy hour offerings where apps and drinks will be available to order at a discounted price. We talk about all the different happy hours in our full DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining, which you can also find over at dfbstore.com. But let me list just a few of the different ways you can save for now. Because remember, a lot of people don't spend their days at Disney Springs. They go to the parks and then they go to Disney Springs at night. So they are really trying to bring in the guests during the day. That's why they have so many of these great happy hour options. Between 4 and 6 p.m. daily, Haleo has specially priced tapas and beverages. At the House of Blues restaurant and bar on Monday through Thursday, from open to 5 p.m., you can get $2 off all bottled and canned beer, $5 house wine and well liquors, and $6 margaritas and Long Island iced tea. And Monday through Friday from noon to 3 p.m. at Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, you can grab $6 to $7 wine and well drinks, $6 to $7 draft beers, and 8 and under appetizers. Just something to keep in the back of your mind as you're planning your trip's dining itinerary. Tip two, plan to eat around lunch. On the weekends, several Disney Springs restaurants also have specialty brunch menus, but even if they don't, and the restaurant still has hefty breakfast offerings available, you can still wind up feeding two birds with one scone. Eat a filling breakfast later, and it could fill you up for lunch too. All right, back to the challenge at hand. We're starting off breakfast with something even more sustainable than the Pongo Lumpia spring rolls from Animal Kingdom, and that's the egg and cheddar breakfast sandwich at Earl of Sandwich for $6. Even if you decide to hit this place up later in the day, Earl of Sandwich, which is located in the Marketplace section of Disney Springs, is one of the most affordable quick services on property, with its lunch and dinner sandwiches, wraps, and salads normally ranging between $8 and $9 each, and all of it is really good. After a morning full of window shopping, you can head to Town Center and do my favorite part of this entire week, go to Chicken Guy. This place is well known for its chicken tenders and lots of dipping sauces. You can even get grilled chicken tenders if you're trying to do low carb or keto. A three tender meal entree, which comes with your choice of two signature sauces, comes to about $6 total. Note that both the Earl of Sandwich breakfast and the chicken tenders from Chicken Guy that I've added to this budget are not part of a combo meal. So if you'd like a side and drink with either of those entrees, you'll have to factor in a few extra bucks towards your overall total. So sandwiches and chicken tenders can we seriously still keep things under 20 bucks at the rate we're going? Yes, because dinner, we're getting pizza. Pizza Ponte is a quick service over in the landing that serves up these ginormous single slices of pizza for a pretty reasonable price. The cheapest of the bunch is the Big Roman, which is straight up tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese coming in at around $7. Other slices with more of a topping variety won't be too much more and are usually priced around $8 to $9 instead. All right, five days down, one to go, but stick around after this last point so we can talk about some other money-saving tactics that might give you a little more wiggle room for your budget. We're headed to the Disney hotels next. There are a lot of Disney World hotels, like a lot, a lot. So for this challenge, we decided to narrow down the scope and stick to a certain area of resorts that'll make it easier for you to hop around. So we chose to do a $20 monorail crawl. Now, this is perfect for this time of year because this is when you wanna go to the monorail resorts anyway to see all the cool gingerbread houses and stuff, right? So we started at Disney's Contemporary Resort for breakfast. Now you've got some popular breakfast 
breakfast options here like Chef Mickey's and Steakhouse 71, but since we're trying to save money here, we're gonna settle with picking up a quick bite from the fast food location, Contempo Cafe, which happens to be one of my favorites. Contempo actually has the cheapest Mickey waffles in Disney World, no kidding, and that's because they've got waffles as a side option for $3 each. If you're cool with one Mickey waffle and maybe a backpack granola bar for a little extra sustenance, then you've got yourself a nice little breakfast to enjoy on the go, or you can sit back for a sec and just enjoy watching the monorail drive straight through the A-frame tower of this hotel. For lunch, we're gonna hit up Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, AKA a rather high-end deluxe hotel that you wouldn't expect to see in a food budget video, and yet here we are. Despite all the grand dining options here, like the AAA five diamond rated Victoria and Albert's and the signature Citrico's restaurant, Grand Floridian does in fact have a quick service with cheaper options and again, one of my favorites. Gasparilla Island Grill is cute, it's bougie on a budget, and it has some rockin' mac and cheese, like seriously some of the best and creamiest ever. I just had it yesterday for lunch. But we're not getting mac and cheese this time. I know, it's tragic. Instead, we're grabbing a grilled cheese sandwich because this grilled cheese comes with a side of hot and tasty tomato soup, all for around 10 bucks. And for dinner, we're completing the monorail circuit by traveling over to Trader Sam's Tiki Terrace, which is the outdoor version of Trader Sam's Grog Grotto. But we're picking Tiki Terrace because, well, getting a seat can be stressful at Grog Grotto. Finding a seat at Tiki Terrace, however, is a whole lot easier. It just won't give you the same interactive experience you'll find inside. Tiki Terrace and Grog Grotto both have the same drink and appetizer offerings, which are available between 3 and 10 p.m. So it's time to put our sharing skills to the test. Shareable apps here range in price between $10 and $18, which is high. The cheapest of the options is gonna be the pan-fried dumplings with soy sesame dipping sauce. But for less than a dollar more, you can get the Kahlua pork tacos for around $10.50, which if split, would be more like $5.25 each. And while you're enjoying your taco, make sure to appreciate the live ukulele music too. Okay, we did it. At least we made a really good effort. Now it's time to get real with you. This was very tough to pull off. It's not impossible by any means, but it does mean skipping over a lot of exclusive Disney snacks, nice signature dining experiences, and specialty alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. And a big part of a Disney vacation for lots of us is the dining aspect, right? So here's my big two cents. Figure out a doable budget that creates a nice healthy balance for you. If 20 bucks is way too restrictive, then bump it up. Maybe 30 or 40 or even 50 a day sounds more reasonable and allows you to throw in a few treats and a couple of sit down dining experiences along the way. Also consider how many days you're gonna be in the parks. That $20 budget was nice to have because it helps save money for six consecutive days. But if you're only planning on doing a weekend getaway, that type of budget may not make as much sense to you. Instead of paying $120 over the course of six days, you may be cool with paying $120 over the course of two and have a $60 budget for each part. Whatever you decide, always, always, always budget a little more than you think you're gonna spend. When you're looking at those menu prices online, they're subject to change. And we've seen prices bump up multiple times for hundreds of food and drink items just over the course of this year. Not to mention, you'll also need to figure in tax for these items. And if you're at a table or signature restaurant, you definitely need to figure in tips. There's always the possibility you need to go over your budget for some reason or another, especially with a budget that's 20 bucks or less. But that's okay, you're totally allowed to spend more as long as you plan ahead. This is your vacation after all, so budget your food in a way that makes sense for you and your family. All right, friends, your turn. Drop your best Disney World food budgeting tips in the comments so we can help each other save and save and save. And keep checking back in with us here at DFB Guide for more dining reviews, recommendations, and future updates because you know we're going to have them. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.